Hi everyone, welcome to today's devotional. This week we're talking about the Holy Spirit. In fact, we're in a new series called Clear, all about the Holy Spirit, His work in our lives, and how He empowers us to be the people that God has created us to be. Today we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. So when you examine the scriptures, you can see the Holy Spirit primarily does two things in the life of the believer. Uh, Overall, he's revealing Christ to us. But what exactly does that mean? Well, one, it means that he's giving us the character of Christ so that we have his, uh, his integrity, his character traits, his personality, so to speak. And the second thing he does is give us the power of Christ. So the character of Christ and the power of Christ. Now, the power of Christ is what we commonly refer to as the gifts of the Spirit, and that's going to be covered uh, on another day. Today, we're looking at the character of Christ or what we refer to as the fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit and the, how the Spirit uh, affects our behavior and affects the way we live our lives and make our decisions all throughout the New Testament. But the classic text that covers the fruit of the Spirit is found in the book of Galatians chapter 5. So that's what we're going to be reading today, Galatians 5, starting in verse 22. Galatians 5, starting in verse 22. Read with me. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. All right, so that's great. Nice list. We learn about it in Kids District. Kids sing the song. We put the you know, pictures of different fruit on the felt board or whatever. And we learn about these fruit of the Spirit. Now, a couple of things. Very important to note here. First of all, it is fruit of the Spirit and not fruits of the Spirit. I think a lot of times we read this as a list of accomplishments, right? I'm going to work on my love. I'm going to work on my patience. And ooh, I've been growing a lot in joy, but I'm kind of struggling in self-control. That's not really how it works, though. It's not fruits of the Spirit as if one tree could produce eight different kinds of fruit. No, it's fruit of the Spirit. These eight things will be produced in the life of a person who, just like a tree, is planted, is watered, and is nourished properly. If you, as a believer, are planted in a faith family, a body of believers, a church, if you are Uh, watering yourself daily in the Word and in the presence of God. And if you're getting nourished by godly community and by good teaching, man, you're going to grow and you're going to produce all of these things, maybe not an equal measure depending on your personality, but all of these things will begin to grow in your lives. And likewise, if a fruit tree is not producing, it's a sign of unhealth. It's a sign that Maybe something is not quite right with that tree, and the same is true in us. If we are full of the Holy Spirit, if we are uh, a part of the family of God, then we ought to be seeing these things in our lives in greater and greater measure. And if we're not growing in all of these areas, it's a sign that maybe there's something not quite right in our spirit. Maybe we're not spending time in God's Word. Maybe we've gotten uh, disconnected from the body of Christ because of some resentment or some unforgiveness. Uh, Or maybe we're just feeling lazy and we're not applying ourselves to the things of God the way we need to be. At any rate, the health and the vitality of a tree can be measured in some ways by the health and the vitality of the fruit. And so this is a great way kind of to check ourselves. Man, am I really growing into the person God wants me to be? Now, the second thing to note about fruit is that trees don't work to make fruit, right? In fact, Galatians, uh, just above this passage, talks about what it calls the works of the flesh, the works of our sinful nature. And it's this long list of terrible things that we do in our own strength. When we're left to our own devices and we're not serving the Lord, then we produce works of the flesh. But fruit is different. Trees don't work to make fruit. A healthy tree will make fruit. In the same way a healthy Christian will make fruit. You can't force yourself to be more loving. You can't muster up 
enough uh, self-control to satisfy the demands of the Lord. These things come to us not naturally, but supernaturally. When we're filled with the Spirit of God and we're drawing close to Him daily in the Word and in prayer and when we're spending time among His people and when we're giving ourselves over to Him in worship and in glad service, well, guess what? These things, these fruit of the Spirit will be produced in us. And this was a hugely liberating thing for me. When I was young, man, I thought I had to work for this stuff, that this was a, a list to be accomplished. It's not. This is not a list of goals. This is a list of results. This is what will result for the person who is full of the Holy Spirit and living according to the Spirit. Now, uh, maybe you hear all this, you're like, all right, that's great. I'm trying to spend time with God. I'm in the Word. I don't know if I'm growing in this the way that I need to be. What are some of the things that maybe are preventing me from growing uh, this fruit and producing this fruit in my life? Well, the Bible actually says right here in verse uh, 24, Galatians 5, 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Hmm. There it is. How do I grow in this? How do I become more in tune with the Spirit of God so that I am producing this fruit? It says it right here. I have to take my sinful self and my natural passions, my natural desires, and nail those things to the cross. You know, Paul said, I die every day. Jesus said, if you want to come after me, take up your cross and follow me. The secret to living the life God wants us to live, the secret to producing this fruit in our lives and in our hearts is not to try harder, but to die to ourselves. When we die to ourselves and to our own sin nature, then we are free to walk in step with God's Spirit. Because usually what I want in my flesh and what God wants in the Spirit are opposites. I want to be selfish. He wants me to be generous. I want to be angry. He wants me to be kind. So if I'm going to live according to the Spirit, that means I can no longer live according to my own passions, my own appetites, my own desires. All of that has to be put to death so that I can live according to God's Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so much that you have given us your spirit so that we can be more and more like Jesus. God, I pray for everyone watching this right now, God, that we would surrender our hearts and our passions, our desires, our time, our everything to you. God, that we would nail to the cross of Christ every wicked impulse in our hearts so that we may live according to the spirit and walk in step with you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.